What's up, everybody? Welcome to One Take. I'm Gil. I'm a one. And we've got a whole bunch of news stories to talk about in the entertainment world today. First off, a little movie about a spider. Not talking about Spider-Man. Talking about Black Widow, which is a type of spider, right? It's true, yeah. I, don't, I feel like most people don't think about that when they think of Black Widow. Yeah, see, I make those. That's why you tune into one take because we connect the dots. We make connections that other people don't make. Alon, what do you know about the Black Widow film? I know it's going to be a prequel. Right, and that's actually the news for today. We got a little bit of light shed on the prequel and what Kevin Feige is thinking for the Black Widow solo film. And I should warn up front, there are going to be some spoilers for Avengers Endgame. But you've all seen that by now, right? I hope so. You've seen it, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Midnight Showing, we saw it. Um, so Kevin Feige was uh, being interviewed by io9, and he had this to say about the Black Widow movie. There's always a method, and doing things in an unexpected way is something we find fun. There are ways to do prequels that are less informative or answer questions you didn't necessarily have. And then there are ways to do prequels where you learn all sorts of things you never knew before. <laughs> and then in case you were like, what's a prequel? He gives you an example. <laughs> I look at Better Call Saul as a wonderful example of a prequel that almost completely stands on its own apart from Breaking Bad because it informs you about so many things you didn't know about before. So time will tell which way we've gone with the supposed Black Widow movie. <laughs> I'm not sure how much I learned from that. <laughs> <laughs> it's almost like it's more confusing now. Especially the way he ends it. He says, with a supposed Black Widow movie. Like, we know you're making a Black Widow yeah. movie. It's filming right now. Maybe he was just describing prequels, and then he's like, oh yeah, we're making a prequel. Yeah. <laughs> Suppose there was a Black Widow film. <laughs> so my main question for you, we don't know anything about this movie. I guess two questions. One, do you care about this movie? And yeah, I do. So you see, that's one thing I struggle with, and this is where we get into the spoilers. The fact that she died in Endgame. Does that at all make you say, meh, I'm done with her story? Well, I care about the story. You know, you watch a movie for the journey, not necessarily the ending. Mm -hmm. So I think I can still enjoy it knowing where she ultimately ends up in her life. You know everybody dies at some point. That's true. Right? Spoiler alert. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have any speculation on what this movie is going to be about? I have a feeling it'll have something to do with Budapest since right. Hawkeye and uh, Black Widow referenced it multiple times throughout the Avengers series. Right. They'd always say, ah, this reminds me of back in Budapest. We're not in Budapest anymore. So we might see some of that. We also might see in Avengers Age of Ultron, there were all the flashbacks to when she was a kid. True. And she was raised, uh, you know, one of those classic child uh you know where, where kids are raised in like a very Orphanage. militant environment no oh. <laughs> <laughs> no she's trained to be like a super spy um, from a young age like ender's game right exactly or soldier right <laughs> soldier that was a good movie that was that was pretty i good. don't know if it was good but i enjoyed it we watched them when we were like <laughs> seven yeah so they could go that route too that could be cool yeah kind of like uh story of her life kind of thing right right and the reference to better call saul could he be subtly hinting that this will be both prequel and sequel. Maybe he's hinting this is in the Better Call Saul slash Breaking Bad universe. <laughs> if he had just said that, <laughs> I would be all in, just out of curiosity. Yeah, it's probably not going to happen, though. No, I'd be highly man. doubtful. <laughs> <laughs> That's even less likely than Venom showing up in a Spider-Man movie. One day we'll get that. Kevin Feige actually said it's very likely. Well... But <laughs> I mean, it should be very likely. He's the, like the most popular villain in Spider-Man. Right. <laughs> but it was when he said that, it was in the context of somebody asked him the question and he said, well, Sony owns both of those. So, I mean, I don't know what they're doing with it. Like, it seems pretty likely. So, <laughs> it seems like he was speculating the same way that you or I would. Hmm. All right. So, probably not a whole lot more to say about the Black Widow movie. We just don't know anything about it. You're interested. Yeah. I mean, I'm not like, 
you know, <laughs> I, marking I, I, your calendar. I, want, <laughs> I can't wait for this Black Widow movie. <laughs> you know, I, it's going to be based on the trailer at this point. Whenever that comes out, right mm-hmm. now I'm intrigued. I'm not like I can't wait. Right. So, you know, are there any movies you're looking forward to? Just so I can gauge. Man. I mean, I. <laughs> Yeah, I guess I mean Spider Man. Spider Man. If they announced a new Spider Man like back in the day, I would I would be like looking at my calendar. Mm-hmm. Like now, I know there's a new Spider Man movie coming out, and I'm looking forward to it. Right, it's but, not the same. No, no, we'll see. Were Were you <laughs> part of the? There was a swirl of rumors earlier this week where somebody I forget who associated with Marvel tweeted the number four, uh. an image drawn with webbing. You're never going to believe what's coming. I did not think it was the next Sam Raimi (laughs) (laughs) Spider-Man. Well, to be fair, people didn't think they were making a fourth Sam Raimi Spider-Man, but they thought that they were going to do a comic book adaptation. Right. Which I probably wouldn't have been that excited for that. (laughs) (laughs) So do we know what it is yet? Uh, I actually don't think so. Oh, no. So the next day, they released a three. So so it's a countdown. Yeah, but who starts the countdown from four unless there's a reason? You think they were trolling? Like they wanted people to think that it was a Spider-Man 4? I mean, I'm sure they thought some people would think that, but... That's not why they did it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I do... I think we will see Tobey Maguire Spider-Man in the next Spider-Verse movie. Cameo appearance. Maybe we'll get a live-action Spider-Verse movie eventually. Maybe. I think that's a ways down the road. I know Tom Holland said he would love to do that. You know when that's going to happen? You know, right now they're doing all the photorealistic adaptations of the old Disney cartoons. Yeah. The new Lion <laughs> King, Aladdin. Eventually they're going to start doing that for other movies too. So we'll get the Spider-Verse live action, you know, 20 years from now. Yeah. And they resurrect Tobey Maguire. Not that I think Tobey Maguire is going to die by then. Resurrect his character. Right. Although his character didn't die either. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so that's Marvel. That's the Marvel corner of the world. Let's go to somewhere a little darker, a little bit more mature. Halloween. The Halloween remake, 2018, I think it came out. Uh, We both saw that. Pretty good, right? Yeah, it was a good movie. We weren't even really fans of the original. No. But we saw it, didn't really hold it in very high regard. We love Halloween, the holiday. Love the holiday, my favorite holiday. Right. So we knew they were making a sequel. They've shed a little bit more light on that today. It's, they're targeting a 2020 release. Uh, the, the writer of the original, or the director of the original movie, seems pretty likely he's going to come back. Um, the uh, main actress, whose name currently escapes me, but she played Laurie Strode, the main character. You knew it like five minutes ago. Yeah, I know. We, we, got too, we went too far down the rabbit hole of uh, Black Widow Spider-Man talk. <laughs> it got me all confused now. Jamie Lee. Curtis. That's right. Wow, I'm impressed you knew that. Thanks, man. So it seems likely she's going to come back. I should say, spoilers for the Halloween 2018 sequel starting now. So I'm surprised that she's coming back. I, th- I, I would have thought if you were doing a sequel to this, you sort of closed out the story on that character. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't know. Same question as the, the Black Widow one. Do you care about this? <laughs> a little less than I care about the Black Widow movie, but I'm I'm interested, right? Intrigued. It depends. I mean, I guess it's the same answer for all of these. <laughs> yeah, it's well made if it's good. <laughs> I I'm just I feel like I need to see more. I need to see some reviews. Right. Like I, there's very few movies I'm like just all in for. Yeah, like I think I've gotten. I've been disappointed too many times that now I need to see more info. I need to see reviews before right. I I, com- I get too worked up about it. It's like by the time Terminator 6 gets announced, yeah. you're not like, oh shit, they're making another Terminator. Yeah. Like, I would love for a good Terminator movie, mm-hmm. but I'm not going to let myself care too much unless it actually turns out to be a great movie right. based on enough reviews. Well, so so one thing I wonder about Last Halloween, it worked because they basically, or part of the reason it worked is they ignored the, you know, 10 sequels to the original. And that gets rid of some of the ridiculousness factor, which is how many times are they going to defeat Mike Myers only for him to come back? How are they going to avoid that problem with this sequel? Do you think it is avoidable? So, 
I'm just speculating, but it's the feeling I get is like they're trying to be more realistic about it this time around. Mm -hmm. Like what ended up he they he was in the basement caught on fire, right? Right. He was in the basement. The implication is that he he got killed. Exactly, yeah. But they didn't show a body. Right. So I think everybody walked out thinking, oh, he's coming back. Yeah. I mean, if he comes back from that, it's still more believable than some other horror movies where they like clearly that person should be dead Mm -hmm. and then somehow they come back. In the next movie, so Jason Friday the Thirteenth. At one point, they literally captured him, cut his body part into pieces, and put each piece in a separate <laughs> jar. Started possessing people's bodies and killing people. Yeah, I mean, if it's a movie, but there was no supernatural element implied originally in the movie, right? No. Yeah. So if if that supernatural element existed from the beginning, okay, fine. Right. But in Halloween, there's no supernatural element as far as we know. So I think that would be a cop out to do something like that. If he's like severely burned, mm-hmm. fine. I'm okay with it for for the movie. But right. it, you know, if they like stabbed him in the head and through the heart, <laughs> and then he came back, then I'd have trouble with that. <laughs> like stab him in the head and take his heart out. And throw yeah. It away. <laughs> yeah. The I, this is another one. Yeah. The only way right now, I'm super skeptical of this movie. But I don't know if they have some twist we haven't thought of or some angle to make this interesting, not just from a plot standpoint of how does Mike Myers come back. I can buy that. He's gonna, he survived. But how are they going to make it interesting from a character standpoint? I mean, the second movie so, or, or the, the, the um, sequel, so much of it was about Laurie's character moving on, finding closure and all that. So we'll wait to see. Now, the thing they could do, which would make me super interested... Did you know that the original Halloween series was meant to be an anthology series? No. And in fact, I think the second one, they brought back Mike Myers just because of the popularity. The third one, they tried to do a totally unrelated Halloween story. I think it was called Season of the Witch, where this uh, toy manufacturer was making all these masks. And then it turned out that all the kids wearing those masks, on Halloween night, they were going to play some song like... Halloween, Halloween. <laughs> then all the kids' faces turn into bugs and stuff. So I guess there is a supernatural <laughs> element in the, in the Halloween series, right? But then they jettisoned that and brought Mike Myers back. Right. What was that word? Jettisoned. Wow. Which, which basically, I mean, just, I could tell from context. But, you can figure out what it means. It's yeah. <laughs> huh, a good word. If they announced <laughs> that this next Halloween movie would involve a crossover of Mike Myers and the in the crazy masks like that kill kids, then I'd be interested. Yeah. Listen, I'm okay with a random supernatural <laughs> if it's a good movie. Well, it doesn't have that could be technology. Ah, right. Yeah, kind of like Child's Play. The uh, what's his name? Chucky. Yeah, Chucky. Yeah, in the original, the doll was possessed by a dead person. Yeah. Now he's just a robot. Yeah, I guess the bugs could be like nanobots or something. Nanobugs? Nanobugs. Or they could be actual bugs that are just embedded in the mask. That's true. Frozen until that song activates the heat. You know what? I'm going to stop talking because I'm going to write this movie. (laughs) (laughs) Star Wars. You care about this movie? (laughs) Man, I don't know. My answer is the same for everything. Yeah, you're just too jaded. You're I mean, too are jaded. you? What about you? I'm intrigued. Okay, so same <laughs> as me. <laughs> okay, so Star Wars Episode Nine. I think everybody knew. Uh, spoilers for <laughs> Star Wars: The Last Jedi. All right. We all knew that in one way or another, Mark Hamill would come back. Right. Some people wondered, is it going to be a flashback? Some weird form? Is it going to be a Force ghost? I pretty much assumed it was going to be a first I mean, <laughs> yeah, based on previous movies. So he seems to have confirmed that. In uh, Associated Press interviewing him, and they asked him, is this really going to be your last Star Wars appearance? And he said, I sure hope so. <laughs> so he's continuing his trend yeah. of bad-mouthing Star Wars <laughs> constantly. <laughs> they asked him why. And he said, well, because... I had closure in that last one. The fa- kind of sounds like him. That's what I was going yeah, for. Was, all right, keep going. <laughs> because we could cut in the audio, but I'd rather just do an impression. Okay. The fact that I'm involved in any capacity is only because 
of that peculiar aspect of the Star Wars mythology, where if you're a Jedi, you get to come back and make a curtain call as a Force ghost. <laughs> yeah, so I, I guess I don't really have a whole lot to say about that. I assumed he was going to be a Force ghost. He seems to have sort of confirmed it. Uh, I don't know. Do you think it's going to be in the same capacity as Obi-Wan or the other Force ghosts we've seen where it's just show up, give some advice, disappear? I don't know. I mean, it's ba- you're basically asking me to just make a prediction. I kind of want to just see you write. A, I want to hear your own <laughs> version of what the next Star Wars would be. What are you hoping for? Or at this point, are you just so disconnected from the Star Wars world? You're just, you know, whatever. I mean, I would like to see heavy involvement, even if it is as a ghost, just kind of guiding Ray mm-hmm. throughout. I don't want it to just be like a few seconds in the movie, because mm-hmm. um, I feel like we didn't get enough of him in the other in the in the other two movies. So I mean. Now, here's a question. You said guiding Ray. What if he shows up to Kylo? You did say to him, I think, at the end of the last movie, something like, see you around, kid. (laughs) It wasn't that, but it was like, if you strike me down, I'm going to bother you forever. So, you think this movie will just be about Luke haunting (laughs) Kylo Ren? Kylo's like, leave me alone. (laughs) No. (laughs) Use the force. That would be interesting, mm-hmm. like a horror movie set in the Star Wars universe. I would love to see that. I bet we will see that reminds eventually. Of, it reminds me of that X Men one. Uh, it was I forget. Remember New Mutants? Yeah, yeah. Is that what that, that was? That still hasn't been released. Oh. <laughs> and uh, they asked, you know, um, I forget her name, the actress who plays Arya. Uh, I know this. Not Sophia Turner, but yeah. the other one. Right, the other one. They, they asked her about that, and she was like, I don't know, but maybe now that you're asking me, somebody will read this article and tell me when they're going to finally release that movie. <laughs> so I, I guess they were planning to do a bunch of reshoots on the film to try and make it scarier, and uh, then Disney bought Fox, and now it's kind of stuck in this weird limbo. Isn't it weird that probably the last X-Men movie in this franchise is going to be New Mutants? Yeah, that, that's kind of weird. Yeah, we'll save that for when we talk about X-Men, though. Logan would have been a good last movie. Yeah. You know, coming from Fox. Yeah, agreed. Because it basically concluded the whole storyline. And then they would have ended on a good (laughs) X-Men movie. would have ended on a strong note. (laughs) Hey, to be fair, we haven't seen Dark Phoenix. We might love it. This might be the one exception where the critics all hate it. And then we like it. Do we know the audience score on Rotten Tomatoes? Oh, no, I haven't checked. I haven't checked. We'll check that in a minute. But we'll just close out. Uh, yeah, Star Wars, <laughs> probably a Force ghost. I don't think Episode Nine is going to be a horror movie. <laughs> Me neither. But, <laughs> but if they announced a Star Wars horror movie, I'd be all in. And I think it's possible because they're starting to explore doing these mm-hmm. other trilogies, these side movies. It could happen one day. Um, Avengers. There's a video game coming out. Yep. This is your this is your domain now. I don't really know about video games. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> it's an Avengers video game. <laughs> we haven't seen any gameplay. Yeah. It looks like they basically just made a video of the Avengers fighting some unknown bad guy mm-hmm. in the city. A bridge explodes. Right. All the characters look like slightly tweaked versions of the actors in the movie. Yeah, which gives a really uncanny feel, yeah. uncanny valley feel to the trailer. Because it's like, that's kind of like a weird looking Robert Downey Jr. Yeah. I mean, it's it looks fine. It doesn't tell me anything about the game, mm-hmm. the gameplay. Yeah. So, like everything else, I have to wait and see. <laughs> I, I'll say this. I mean, I had a pretty negative reaction to the trailer they showed. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, not a huge gamer, but even I recognize the fact that they basically showed us no gameplay. So I have no idea what kind of a game is it. Is yeah. it an action game? Is it an RPG game? I will say I imagine that most superhero movie uh, games coming out are probably going to take a hint from Insomniac's uh, Spider-Man game because mm. that is pretty much looked at as maybe the best superhero video game. Yeah, So I, I have a feeling they'll probably try to emulate a lot of the mechanics in that game. They have hinted at uh, being able to build your own roster of Avengers, uh, picking which heroes are on the team. 
they try, they imply that there's online play, so I don't know what that will look like. Sounds exactly. like you know more than me about the game. Yeah, I've read up a little bit. <laughs> uh, but my negative reaction to the trailer, okay, A, didn't see any gameplay. B, the voice acting felt like it left something to be desired. Yeah, I mean, it's a video game. Yeah. It doesn't need to have the best voice acting. So it's almost like instead of showcasing the acting and the cinematics, should have focused on the gameplay side of it. <laughs> maybe they're not confident in that. It or maybe they're be. still working on it. Mm-hmm. It's not coming out for a while. I don't know if we even know when it's coming out. The, um, uh, also the storyline, I want to say. Um, major death in the trailer. Captain America. And it was, I couldn't even tell what was going on. It was like a ship crashed. <laughs> and I guess he was on that ship. It's not a very heroic or interesting death. Were they trying to imply that's how he died? Oh, I, th- I just assumed so. Oh. As you see a ship crash into the water, maybe there was an explosion, and then it's like cut to Captain America's yeah, funeral. Yeah, I don't think a ship explosion would even kill him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, let's say one really good thing about the trailer, though, just so it's not totally negative. When Hulk is holding up the car or tank or whatever, that great. <laughs> kicks that guy away. Yeah, that was, that was a good moment. Yeah. I hope that's a mechanic in the game. <laughs> I hope you're able to lift cars and kick at the same yeah, time. <laughs> not just like a time button, like press A now to kick yeah. the guy. <laughs> I hope you could just do that as much as you want. But did I sound dumb when I said press A? Is A even a key anymore in any video game uh, controllers? Yeah. Uh, Xbox. Okay. All yeah. right. Cool. Cool. How about on the Wii? The Wii. Or the Switch. <laughs> the Wii. Uh, so the Switch is weird. One of the Joy Cons. Has uh, uh, letters, yeah, X, Y, A, B, Mm -hmm. and the other one just has arrows. Oh, okay. So if you ever have a game where you're just holding one of them, you have and you have to like tell the other person what to press. You have to be like press the right button instead (laughs) of like press A. So press A or the left arrow key to kick the guy. Yeah. Okay. Exactly. (laughs) All right. So on to a more exciting video game. Mm -hmm. What am I talking about? So another game where we saw no gameplay. But we already know what to expect. Zelda Breath of the Wild sequel. Mm-hmm. And what have they... Have they said, or is it just clear from the trailer, that this is a direct sequel to Breath of the Wild? Well, first of all, during the trailer, it very clearly uses similar assets and the same character models and everything. But right at the end of the trailer, it says, uh, the Zelda Breath of the Wild sequel is in development. Oh, so okay, there's okay. no question about it. That's a direct sequel. Got it. Okay, so tell me everything <laughs> that was revealed in the trailer. Well, and have they revealed anything outside the trailer, or was it all? Did they tell us anything about it, or was it just the trailer they showed? Well, the only thing they've really said is that they had so many ideas for DLCs. You know what DLC is? Downloadable content. Yeah, which is basically expansion packs from back mm-hmm. in the day, like Brood War, Starcraft. Yeah. Or Lord of Destruction, Diablo, Diablo too. Mm. too. So, yeah. So they said they had so many ideas. They decided they have to make a full blown sequel mm-hmm. uh, to house them all. So in the trailer, it starts out with this kind of swirly blue light aura. Okay, I guess. And there was some suspicion from people dissecting the trailer that these are letters in the you know the in-game language and uh someone actually managed to translate a part of it It said seal ganon Hmm. like s-e-a-l like lock them up exactly which makes sense because as link and zelda walk through these caverns you they actually stumble upon this corpse that uh based on some context cues you can tell uh, is uh ganondorf is Ganondorf... Uh, I know Ganondorf has been a villain in a bunch of Zelda games. Was he the villain in Breath of the Wild? Uh, no, actually. Oh. So, it, it's weird. It's the same... You know, it's the same bad guy, Ganon. But Ganondorf is just Ganon taking the form of this human. Well, not human. It's... Uh, Humanoid? Well, he is human. Oh. Gerudo. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta read up on Zelda yeah. mythology. Yeah, so... uh what was I saying? So they found, so Ganondorf was not in Breath of the Wild. Right. And there's this whole, there's a weird creature called Calamity Ganon. Oh, okay. Yeah. And then you beat him, and then you fight Ganon in his giant pig form. Okay. Yeah. And there was no Ganondorf. So, you know, the people are inferring that in this this direct sequel, 
you'll actually fight Ganondorf. And maybe Calamity Ganon was another kind of like phantom puppet bad guy. And now we found the actual source of the evil. Mm, okay, okay. Yeah. <laughs> cool. So you're, th- this this is probably the only thing we've brought up <laughs> this this show where you're not just um, intrigued. You're excited about this, right? Yeah, absolutely. And they've given no hints as to when this is coming out. No, but we assume it will not take as long as it took to get Breath of the Wild out, since they're using the same engine mm-hmm. that they built for Breath of the Wild. That was a whole new game engine they built from scratch. Well, on that point. That was originally developed for Wii U. Right. And then they came out with it on the Switch. Right. So wouldn't we have hoped to hear that they're developing a new engine optimized for the Switch? Or well, is that bad news? Well, I mean, I think the, the main difference between the two systems is just the, 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 uh, the power. The okay. graphics processing power, that kind of thing. So, you know, the code base, I imagine, isn't much different. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay, I was trying to sound smart, but... No, Nintendo (laughs) seems to like to keep things simple, which is, you know, seems to work for them. Right, right. Yeah. Cool. So, I, I, even though I didn't even play Breath of the Wild, I'm excited to sit on the couch and watch you play the sequel (laughs) so I can see where this all goes. Maybe you could do some uh, reaction. Let's play. We can do a let's play, Uh, right? Yeah. Cool. Okay. So, we mentioned it earlier. We've got to talk about the elephant in the room. There's a, a, a new X-Men movie out. Oh. <laughs> I'm a big comic book fan. This is the premier place to go to hear about movies. And we haven't even seen it. Dark Phoenix. Right. So, my question, a few questions. Number one, do you think you'll ever see this movie? <laughs> no. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think I will. And why is that? <laughs> or, or put another way, when did you stop caring about the X-Men? Well, I, let me tell you the last time I did care. Mm. Well, Logan. But before that, X-Men First Class. They rebooted it. I thought they did a great job with that movie. And I, I felt like it was in good hands. Mm-hmm. And then, what was the one after First Class? Uh, Days of Future Past. Right. So that, it was, if I recall, it was okay. Mm-hmm. And then after that, Apocalypse came out. That was the last chance I gave it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I thought that was just horrendous. Yeah. So, well, and then on top of that, Logan came out around the same time, mm-hmm. which was not just the best X Men movie, but in its own right, an incredible film. Yeah. Which also was a. It felt like a conclusion to the X Men story. So now you're done with the X Men story. You've seen this awesome movie. And you're like, okay, what's next? And Apocalypse had come out, so you've already sort of stopped caring about the first class reboot version of X-Men. And then Dark Phoenix. So from Logan, spoilers, you know in Logan, they basically explained that all the mutants were killed. Right. So does that make you care less about Dark Phoenix purely because you know that they all end up dead? <laughs> well, yeah, you know how I am. As soon as I know a character is going to die, like Black Widow, I just stop caring entirely. And the X-Men's a little different, though, because we've seen them play with the timeline. Yeah. So I watch Logan, and I think this is a possible timeline. And somehow in my head, I can, I can break it up and say... Although, although isn't Avengers the same where they could play with the timeline? Mm, yeah, they haven't been. They haven't really done that very much, yeah. though. I mean, even in Endgame, they did, but they did it in a little bit of a different yeah. way, right? And they did say that if you die because of the, you know, someone's killing you to get the Soul Stone, you're dead forever. And but, there's... but Gamora was killed for the Soul Stone, and she came back. Yeah, but that's a different Gamora. <laughs> they can't get back <laughs> the other Gamora. <laughs> well, they could. So that could be the Black Widow movie, like a different dimension. Yeah. All right. Maybe fine. <laughs> Um, yeah, so I think we're, we're pretty much done with this iteration of X-Men. Everybody keeps talking about it as if Dark Phoenix was the last one from Fox. That's never been officially stated. Mm-hmm. And, and even that, there's the caveat we mentioned earlier. New Mutants will be released in one form or another. I'm skeptical as to whether or not it's going to get released in theaters. I could see them dropping it on Netflix or Hulu or something. We'll see. But, you know... Putting that aside, Dark Phoenix is the end. Hasn't been confirmed, but it seems pretty likely considering Disney now has control of X-Men again. Yeah, I mean, also considering how it 
bombed. I'm not sure they would want to make another one anytime soon. Yeah, bombed at the box office, bombed critically. The word of mouth on it has just been horrendous. I mean, and that's the other thing. If, if people were saying it was great, I would definitely go see it and yeah. I would care about it. Right? So all that context could have been where we say, oh, I don't really care about X-Men anymore as a series. That can all be undone by just making a great movie. But how? So Disney, Marvel now has control over the X-Men again. How do you think they get reintroduced, rebooted? What happens next? It's a good question. I, you know, th- I imagine they'll have maybe there's some mutants that have been kind of under, not literally underground, but you know, like under the radar. They've been keeping it a secret. Maybe, maybe there's like a bad guy mutant that starts wreaking havoc. Maybe it's someone that just became a mutant. Mm-hmm. I know that. Normally you're born of, or no, you. I think you, they usually the, the, manifest later. Right. Your powers. Yeah. So maybe they're starting to manifest. I think we're gonna we're gonna see it from the beginning, the introduction of the mutants. But they're gonna somehow figure out how to make it all happening now after all the events of, you know, the MCU so far. But when you say the beginning, you don't mean. So are you saying that the X-Men, the, the mutants, have existed, but kind of underground? And when you say beginning, you mean they're becoming public? Or you mean the mutations are starting now? Maybe it's going to be a combination of the two. So some mutants have been around for a while, but they haven't been in the public eye. Yeah. And then something happens, which draws them out into the public. Which is kind of the way they introduce... There's a precedent for that, because Spider-Man was sort of introduced that way. Where Tony Stark, all of a sudden, was like... Yeah, I know about a kid in Queens. Yeah. So he'd been around for a little bit already. Yeah. Although, considering how many X-Men there are, it would be... A little harder to yeah. explain. But I, th- I think they'll figure out a way. But you think it's a done deal that the current cast, they're done? I think so. Except, you cannot get rid of Ryan Reynolds as Deadpool, right? No, they're, they're keeping him. Mm-hmm. I mean, the movie only exists because of him. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And, and he's also an easy character to, to deal with that whole issue because he can break the fourth yeah. wall. I, I mean, the only character I think the general public is, like, committed to is uh, Hugh uh, Jackman Hugh as Jackman. Wolverine. So, and, you know, I don't think he's coming back. Right. So, I, I mean, I don't think anyone is really too committed to any of the current characters. Right, except actors. for Deadpool. Except for Deadpool. Right. But he's not in the X-Men movie anyways. True. True. Yeah. So I, I agree with everything you said. I do think they're going to be introduced um, just as either mutations are just starting or they've been around but they've been in secret, which you could explain even though there are a bunch of them because they might just say, we don't want to be out in the public. Mm-hmm. We're afraid of what that would, what you know, that the people would be afraid of mm-hmm. us. So they've intentionally kept it secret. I could see them doing that. Um, I also think they're not going to be introduced in an X-Men movie. I bet they hint at it in other movies first. In fact, uh, I don't know why, but I have a feeling that they're going to be introduced in the next Spider-Man movie, not far from home. Really? I just think it'll... Because if you think about the sorts of issues that X-Men deal with, uh, a lot of times they'll focus on younger characters where they're dealing with the struggles of... You know, not being accepted by their parents because they're a mutant, not being accepted by their peers, feeling like an outsider. That theme, to me, feels like it fits in really well with Spider-Man. So I could see a mutant character being introduced there, becomes friends with well, Parker. Let me ask you this. Haven't they already introduced two characters? Quicksilver <laughs> and uh, what's the witch? Uh, Scarlet Witch. Witch. Yeah. yeah, technically they are both uh, the son and daughter of Magneto and they're mutants. But at the time they were introduced in the Avengers, Disney was allowed to use the characters, but were not allowed to reference the fact that they're mutants. So they made up a different origin story. It's like Russian experiments or something. Mm, okay. So technically you're right, but they've rewritten the origins for those characters. So maybe they'll introduce a new Quicksilver, the mutant <laughs> version of him. Let me throw out one more curveball. Uh, we know that Spider-Man Far From Home introduces the concept of the multiverse right at least in the trailers it's implied or it's, it's stated explicitly that what's his name the guy with the fishbowl head mysterio mysterio comes from another world could the x-men 
the current cast <laughs> cross over from the Fox dimension into the Disney MCU? They could if there really is a multiverse because there is a working theory that Mysterio is lying right. about coming from another universe. Which is exactly the sort of thing Mysterio would do. Yeah. I would find that, to be honest, I'd find that kind of disappointing. I wouldn't mind if he was lying, but I want the multiverse. Well, we already know that you can travel between different timelines, which are essentially parallel universes. But they're, so, they're the same, though. They're only different once you go there and alter the timeline. True, but they've already created a bunch, right? Yeah, that's true. But they're not interesting. It's not like, oh, in this universe, there's mutants. It's more like, oh, in this universe, the hammer was over here instead of over there. That's true. Yeah. Well, I was going to say, because of those events, now would be a good opportunity for Mysterio to claim he comes from another one now that people believe in other. (laughs) But, you know, I'm going to poke at that theory a little bit. Because (laughs) how does he convince people he's from another universe? I mean, look at him. Yeah, look at this thing on my head. <laughs> Everyone from my universe has a fishbowl <laughs> in their head. <laughs> yeah, you're right. That's it. That yeah. would convince Nick Fury. At least based off the uh, level of intelligence he showed in Captain Marvel. <laughs> I was going to say. <laughs> look at this dome. Huh? <laughs> Man, they really dumbed him down in that movie, huh? Yeah, he was a lot younger. Yeah, right. Yeah. That was and pr- losing his eye was <laughs> the source of his power, so. Apparently. <laughs> what power? I don't know. Intelligence? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Oh, there is one more news story. What? I'll give you a hint. I'm a dude. Oh. He's a dude. <laughs> knew all She's that. She's a dude. <laughs> all that's back. Yeah. We watched the first episode. <laughs> we did. I felt it kind was... of weird watching because I was clearly not the target demographic. Yeah. It, I, I try to remember back when I was a kid was all that, like, that childish. <laughs> Probably was. Probably was. Yeah. But we cracked a smile at least once or twice. Yeah. I mean, even the worst comedy is going to have a couple of funny moments. Uh, so let's do a quick review of all that. <laughs> no, I'll just shout out two parts that we thought were funny. The girl that destroys everything. Yeah, that was Destroy! Funny. And just breaks stuff. That was hilarious. And I love stuff yeah. getting broken. It's great. Good burger. Good burger made me laugh. Nice to see Kel back. Glad to see he's doing alright. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm sure, Ke- I'll say this, if they make a good burger too, I don't know. Actually. I, would, I, I, I don't know. It would be fun. You and I, we go grab a couple of orange sodas. I would see it. Yeah, I would for sure see I, it. That movie, I don't care what the reviews are. Yeah. I would see it. <laughs> okay, the closing thoughts here. Would you rather see Good Burger 2 or Keenan and Kel the movie? Huh. Well, basically the same thing. I would thing, see right? Good, Good Burger 2. <laughs> more, we're more invested in the characters. Yeah. Exactly. And I've always wanted a sequel. Well, I didn't really. I stopped caring, but when I was a kid, I wanted a sequel. I didn't know I wanted one until you just mentioned it. <laughs> and in an interview, Keenan and Kel were asked if they would do a sequel, and they said, "Yeah, man, we just need the money. Like if someone pays for it, we'll do it." So, all right, let's start a Kickstarter. All right, go fund me. <laughs> I'm down. All right. Well, that's been one take, everybody. Thanks for watching. And if you enjoyed this video, make sure to subscribe to our channel and hit the little bell icon so you get notifications whenever we make movies and videos like this one. Thanks for watching.